guns of every weapon type in Phantom Forces. This video is going to be listing the worst of the worst of every single weapon type in the game. I apologize for some redundancies, but I will have to be listing some guns that I mentioned in my previous video, but it's just because they suck. Like, so bad. There will be a link to that video in the description if you'd like to check it out. Going in order, we again have our least favorite assault rifle, the M231. This is one of those weapons I have to list again because it just sucks genuinely, horribly. I think the developers put it in the game just for people to hate on it and take away some of the heat on their other weapons. The description says, hits hard, but good luck hitting anything. So they've already begun with a lie, because only half of that is true. You've got about as good a chance of hitting someone with this as you are of winning a lawsuit against Nintendo, so they were right in that aspect, but I don't know what kind of crack they were smoking when they said it hits hard. Firing a 5.56 round, doing 32 torso damage and 44.8 headshot damage on their 90 studs, dropping to 20 torso and 28 headshot after 150, this is literally the exact same or less damage than every single other M4 platform assault rifle in its class. The M16A4, M16A3, C782, and M16A1 all do more or very similar damage respectively. Meaning the only thing this rifle has going for it is that you have to get to rank 123 to suffer with it. Because I guess suffering from success is a real thing. On a less pitiful note, next we have our battle rifle, the G3A3. I will say this was definitely the hardest one to pick out. Pretty much all the battle rifles serve their purpose well and a lot of them perform very similarly. Do not take this as me saying the G3 is a bad weapon. I personally enjoy using it and have friends who main it. I just had to pick one through the video and this is the one that ended up getting picked. Comparing the G3A3 to his tactical brother the AG3 is even harder due to them basically trading pros and cons. A main comparison here was the time to kill of both weapons. The G3A3 is tied for the worst battle rifle time to kill with 0.11 seconds, while the AG3 barely edges it out at 0.10. It does have an impressive 44 torso and 80 headshot damage up to 60 studs, and 33 torso and 60 headshot past 180, making it hit fairly harder than the AG3, however its recoil pattern is rough at best. The G3A3's muscle bounces around like someone with Parkinson's trying to stabilize a Wii remote, making it far more aggressive than its counterpart and therefore harder to use. Damage doesn't really matter much if you can't get accurate shots downrange. The rest of the differences are pretty negligible and would just be me nitpicking on stupid things for a gun I think is decent. So enjoy this, because the battle rifles are a rare instance of an entire class mostly having that respect, except the Scar H, which is kind of... I just think it's boring. Following that, we have the less impressive carbine, the Can Can. Look, I understand this is a gimmick and isn't meant to be super practical or useful, but I'm here to hate on the worst guns, so a hater's gonna hate. This diabetes launching noob tube can very quickly turn a family barbecue into a $3,000 ambulance charge. Launching a plethora of different ammo types, including cannonball apparently, don't know how that would work. So there's plenty of options to choose from in terms of how wildly do I want to affect my ballistic performance. Judging this weapon purely on its basic can ammo for time's sake, it does an impressive 1,120 25 headshot damage up to 50 studs and 825 past 175 with an also powerful 105 and 77 torso damage respectively. It does suffer however with its muzzle velocity. The different ammo types vary wildly but the 70 millimeter can speeds through the air at a thousand studs a second which translates to 280 meters a second making it 0.81623 the speed of sound which roughly means big slow drop fast hurt your teethies. Up next, we have every competitive COD player's favorite, the shotguns. The worst of which being the Model 870. This one is also difficult due to all the shotguns performing more or less the same, minus the E-gun, with differences really only being between damages and fire rates. I chose the 870 due to it just not really being relevant at all once you unlock pretty much any gun past it. I mean, I personally even use the KSG-12 over the 870 if I want to use a pump. It's kind of just there and you really only use it to unlock the next shotguns. With the second lowest fire rate at 100, just ahead of the KS-23's 65, you definitely you want to make sure you hit your first or second shot or it's probably not going to go well. You don't have many interesting choices in terms of customization either. No really cursed builds or super unique ammo types. It's kind of like you're a cop being forced to use the kit the department bought for you. Damage is still respectable with 34 torso and 39.1 headshot damage after 50 studs and a drop off of 13 torso and 14.95 after 130, which is actually not all that bad considering how most big games absolutely butcher shotgun damage after 50 feet and turn them into a glorified Roman candle. The 870 does have a great hip fire spread factor of 0.07 though, so I will give it that, it is definitely accurate. Up next in the PDWs is the Colt SMG 633. I think I probably have PTSD from the M231 because immediately seeing this thing fills me with anger. This thing is pretty much the firearm equivalent of a toddler that hasn't been spanked enough. 
with a short barrel that spits out rage at a blistering speeds but is not very controllable and doesn't make much sense. Somehow they've managed to make a 9mm pistol caliber carbine about as rough to handle as some machine guns. You do move pretty fast, you do have good ADS speed and some attachments to tame it a little bit, but it's just generally not worth it. The damage is actually not all that bad with 32 torso and 44.8 headshot up to 50 studs and 18 and 25.2 past 120, because apparently 9mm does just as much damage as your 5.56 traveling out of a longer barrel in a better weapon, but I, I, video game, I don't know. I won't dwell on this thing too much because I've already brought Dishonor upon the M231 for two videos, so I'll spare the 633 a little. Next in the DMRs, we have the VSS Vinteres. I'm not super sure why this is a DMR, when it kind of performs more like an AR, but with like slightly more damage. The main thing that caught my eye in a bad way is the almost immediate damage fall off at 25 stud, which literally means the damage falls off at an IRL distance of 22.97 feet. I don't even know how that works. Not so affectionately nicknamed the Russian Nail Gun by me, probably honestly. It starts off at a good 66 torso and 99 headshot damage under 25 studs, dropping off to 45.6 and 68.4 after 110. It's not really that impressive, especially when paired with this 10 round magazine. The 762 conversion does bump it a little bit, but we're not looking for a grower, we're looking for a shower. Despite this also having an automatic fire mode, which does make it perform well in close quarters, for some reason, even tap firing in automatic is less controlled than firing at the exact same rate in semi. I don't bother asking me why. This is the only DMR that I would recommend only using in closer maps like Metro Trains and Black Sight. It would definitely perform better than using it in larger maps. Up next we have the far more fun LMGs, the worst of which being the L86 LSW. This British hunk of junk is not a machine gun. It's literally just an L85A2 with a longer barrel. It's the same thing. It's the British equivalent of the Russian saying, Ivan, let us make AK shoot shotgun bullet. But it's British, so they couldn't afford more R and D, and they just lengthened the barrel and added an airsoft vertical grip painted green to the bottom of the stock. The entire purpose of a light machine gun is for firepower and suppression. This has none of those. With pretty much the same damage of every single 5.56 AR in the game, and the exact same capacity as well at 30, this means mean green malfunction machine serves absolutely no purpose in the machine gun category, and is probably just a diversity hire. Either that, or it's a make-a-wish ask that the world forgot about. I won't even bother saying the damage stats, because you just need to look at the M16A4, and it's almost the exact same. Finally, we have everyone's favorite class, the sniper rifle. And the worst of them being the WA-2000. Once again, the Germans were snorting some coke making this thing. Very few were made for probably good reason, because it doesn't exactly exude practicality or performance. Firing your standard 7.62 by 51, which is, uh... Less powerful than the Mosin 7.62x54R, which was uh, fielded in the World War One as a standard infantry rifle, but it's okay, this is still a good sniper. We say, please believe us. This is one of two of the only snipers that have no damage fall off distance. Not because it stays the same, but because the second the bullet leaves the muzzle, it begins to lose damage. Starting off at 97.2 torso and 201.6 headshot at zero studs, then dropping consistently up until 100 studs where it hits 67.5 and 125, then continues to drop until 176 studs where it performs poorly at 58.05 and 107.5. Pretty sure this makes a better DMR than the VSS, but that's neither here nor there. The recoil control on this thing is pretty bad, despite it having heavy wood furniture, a lot of metal above the barrel, including the bipod, and fires in semi-auto, meaning it should have dampened recoil due to the gas piston functionality of most semi-auto firearms, which dampens recoil impulse in conjunction with recoil springs and the heft of the firearm's bolt. I'm not even going to talk about what happens if you use the 75 by 55 conversion. It'd be the same rant as the M107. Just, uh, just stare and cringe at the screenshot. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? Anyway, those were the worst weapons of each primary weapon type in my opinion. I didn't list the M107 as the worst sniper due to the WA2000 being statistically worse. I just chose the M107 in the last video because of everything wrong with it and I hate its overhype. Thank you for commenting and asking for a part 2 of the worst weapons and giving me a reason to get angry at more guns and raise my blood pressure. Please let me know if you'd like to see the worst secondary weapons or would like to see something different. Until then, see ya.